Just before I turned 16 years old, my best friend and I sat around trying to decide what the best job would be to have as a high school student. We settled on costume character at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, when I turned 16, I got the work permit from school, I went to Chuck E. Cheese, and I was working at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> I was not the costume character to start, but it was my first paying job and I learned things along the way. I learned many lessons on that job. And then one night it happened. The regular costume character guy had to leave and they needed Chuck E. Cheese on the floor. <laughs> so he grabs me by the shirt, pulls me into the dressing room, and said, you're on. <laughs> he gave me my training. Three rules, one philosophy. Rule number one. Do not hit kids. <laughs> Rule number two, do not pick up kids. Rule number three, do not go in the parking lot. <laughs> and the philosophy, make the biggest fool out of yourself you can because nobody can see your face. <laughs> I was a quiet, shy, reserved kid. <laughs> I stepped through that door, and it changed. I was Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and I never looked back. What I learned was I got to meet some fascinating people. We had in our Chuck E. Cheese, we had what we called the King Room. It had a six foot tall, automated, Lion that played Elvis songs. <laughs> one night, it was raining. The whole store was pretty much empty except for one family in the king room. So I went in because I was bored. And there was this little girl. So I started dancing with her. And the family kept putting tokens in the machine. They kept buying pizza and beer. And they stayed for an hour and a half. And the managers kept me on the clock. And I learned the lesson. Satisfied customers are important. <laughs> At the end of my shift, I took the costume off. I was a little sweaty, waiting for my mom to come pick me up. So I went into the king room. I leaned against the table. And that little girl came right up to me. And I looked down and said, hello. She looked puzzled and walked away. <laughs> smiled and said, she has no idea. <laughs> I met Mimi. Mimi was a mentally disadvantaged little girl, and she loved Chuck E. Cheese. She loved Chuck E. Cheese because Chuck E. Cheese was the only stuffed animal that would hug back. <laughs> it got to the point where I figured out their schedule. And I would position myself so I could see what was going on in the restaurant, but I can keep an eye on the door. And when Mimi, dressed in her Sunday best with the patent leather shoes, came in to see Chuck E. Cheese, it was like a romance new movie where we both went after each other in a full-on run and met <laughs> <many> in <laughs> <laughs> And from the time they were there until they left, Mimi was always by Chuck E. Cheese's side. And I learned the importance of repeat customers are good customers. <clears throat> One afternoon, I was on the floor, getting paid to play, enjoying myself. And this dad came in with his two kids. A girl about 11, and a boy who seemed like he was working on his fifth or sixth cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> bounced over to me, and he's glad-handed me like you wouldn't believe. And I went to shake the girl's hand, and she hid behind her dad. Now, I understand 
that a five and a half foot tall rat can be intimidating. <laughs> I did what I always did in that situation. I squatted down, spread out my arms, and I heard it. It's okay. He's not a doctor or a nurse. He's not a doctor or a nurse. The words burned into my brain. I made it my goal that day to get this girl to like Chuck E. Cheeks. I pulled out all the stops. I would wave through windows. Walking by, I would smack her dad upside the head. <laughs> I went so far as to run by, scoop up her brother, run in one door, through the kitchen, out the other door, drop him down next to his sister, and kept on going so she wouldn't get scared. The boy, laughing the whole way. <laughs> by the time we left, by the time they left, they headed to the store, and I was with them. Boy's hand in one hand, and the girl's hand in the other. As I got to the door, I decided rule number three is going down too, and I walked them to the car. Dad opened the door, the boy bounced on in, the girl quietly got in. She was putting on her seatbelt. Dad closed the door, shook my hand, and said, thank you. She has cancer and six months to live. You really made her night. I was 17 years old. That's a lot of weight to throw on somebody's shoulders. And I cried as I walked back into that store. But I learned a lesson that night. I learned a lesson that I want to share with you. No matter what you do in life, do it to the best of your ability, because you never know whose life you're going to touch. And ladies and gentlemen, that was the best lesson learned from behind the mask.